Because I think uh, David Wood has decided to turn off or delete his YouTube channel. Um, and he's not joking. And apparently he's sick of getting these strikes from uh, from YouTube. And he's quite clear on that. Every time, he, for some reason, uh, every time he appeals, he gets it back. But that shows the reason they keep doing it is because these people who are looking into these uh, complaints against our channels or channels, David Wood's channel is a lot bigger. Um, he, he, and it makes sense that these people, these uh, th these moderators of YouTube who make a decision whether to take, take the video down or not, these guys are actually activists because their strikes are so arbitrary um, that it just doesn't make any sense. For example, my Urdu show a couple of weeks ago was taken down because I spoke about that Nigerian woman who was lynched by um, some jihadis for blasphemy. I didn't even share the video. I only shared some screenshots, and there, were, there was no violence shown, but they still took it down. I, I protested. I appealed. I made a tweet about it. I, I heard back from them that, okay, we'll look into it. And two weeks later, they said, well, sorry, after careful review, we, we, um, we deem your video to have breached uh, YouTube guidelines. And as a result, they're not going to reinstate it. So th at the same time, there's so many other channels that have actually shown the video. Okay, they've blurred it. But I didn't even get to show the video, though. So it, it's so arbitrary. It just doesn't make any sense. So what do you do with this? You just suck it up. You work so hard to build your channel. It takes years and years of hard work. And then all of a sudden you get the you, you get a community guideline strike. you you can't monetize your channel. And you basically can't do anything. You can't even speak with anyone. My Urdu channel that had 75,000 subscribers, I showed a video which was made against me and I put subtitles on it for context. So YouTube could look into it. I was speaking with this YouTube employee, and he used that video. And he, he used the video that I had uploaded on my Udu channel, sent it to them. Hey, look, this is the URL of the original video. This is what this guy is saying. He's he's issuing death threats against me, my family, and so they blacklisted the whole video as a result because that video was sitting on my channel as well. They gave me a community guideline strike as well, and that's it. I lost my seventy-five k channel. Um, it, it was demonetized for good forever. And I kept talking. I said, I put up this video for you so you can read the subtitles. And that video was against me. How am I spreading hate? That video was made against me. But you can't you can't talk to these people. There's, there's no way. So it's so arbitrary. So anyway, so based on that, David Wood decided that he's going to turn his channel down. He's going to delete his channel and he's going to move it to his website, um, uh, he's going to make his own platform, which is fair enough. Like you can do it, um, you, you, but we can't draw. He, he's pretty big. What, what is it? Six hundred thousand subs, um, and Something David like that, Wood. Yeah. He's been doing it for so long, so he he would have his loyal supporters and followers um, who who would consume the content. But it's not going to be as effective as um, as uh, he has been through YouTube, because on YouTube, everyone watches your videos. Um, uh, so many Muslims, we received so many letters from Muslims who say that David Wood got them to uh, look into it. So I left a comment on his channel and I said, well, okay, fair enough. If you're going to put your new content on, on your website, but at least don't delete this channel. So all the videos that are there, they should stay there. This is this is heavy. yeah, but I, I, I think heavy. the um the problem with that is because obviously I I saw the same post and I was like that's crazy why why would the videos have to come down with it at least leave that behind but that is the problem with YouTube right so unless David Wood keeps contesting every single strike which as he rightly says you've got better things to do with his time um, unless you do that consistently I think within two months YouTube automatically takes down your channel and all the videos associated with it so it's not that like a lot of people were like um like giving him quite a lot of stick for not keeping those videos up and i think he tried to clarify once or twice that it is actually beyond his control the second he stops fighting back 
give it like two months, I think is the time period, and then it's gone itself. So he has no control over that. What people are doing, which I definitely encourage people to do if you've got the time, resources, and you know how to do it, they're like downloading those videos and re-uploading them on their own individual channels. And I think David Wood has said that he's more than happy for people to do that and like disperse his content wherever, however far you can. Um, but yeah, it's a very mm -hmm. worrying trend that we're seeing with YouTube because it's getting very like oppressive with what's happening. And I think uh, like it's scary because if somebody like David Wood, obviously he's definitely thought about this decision a lot. Um, if he's moving to other platforms, I mean, like you and I talk about it sometimes too. I'm like, is this the only platform? You're like, what if you just wake up one day and boom, it's all gone and, and it is in their hands. And we have no idea what's happening with like the control of YouTube when, what, if they're in a slightly liberal mood that day and they'll let you off, but another day they'll completely take um, shadow ban you if they fancy it. And so, yeah, I think people are going to try and now seek out other platforms that are a lot more, um, free with their content as they should be so i think the trend will be i think there's there's rumble or twitch or something where people are are moving to now but yeah my 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 comment on this would be to please like do whatever you can to keep david wood's like legacy alive in terms of these videos as horace said when people hear about the ex-muslim movement there's some key figures you stumble across first and it is most likely apostate prophet david wood people who have been in the game for a long time and have garnered like a massive following and i think it will be extremely tragic if that entire video library is lost that is precious, precious content um, with hours of research behind it and evidence right there. And it's mm -hmm. it's scary that that is a massive weapon we have towards Muslims and I'm trying to you know tell them about what their religion states the way David Hood Wood has been doing this for so long. It's been very effective, as Harris said. You see results massively. So yeah, let's just all do our bit to make sure that all his work, all the research behind it, his videos, they're just constantly still in the limelight on YouTube, however you can. YouTube has to realize this, that any dis any dissenting voices they shut down, they're standing on the wrong side of history. That's akin to when printing press was invented, um, uh, the church decided to use it to propagate their ideology. But then came all the other books that were critical of the Bible, um, but nobody could shut it down. And that gave rise to the Renaissance period. Um, and we're having the same Renaissance period in the Muslim world, where YouTube or Facebook is so, forget about, I, I got off Facebook. Fatua a long time book, ago. as, as um, Professor says. Yeah. Um, so that's what YouTube is doing. They're, they're, ba they're basically shutting down these dissenting voices and uh, when we'd look back at this period of renaissance in the muslim world 100 or 200 years later um there would be uh, you know these people would be the youtube or facebook or zuckerberg or whoever's uh, susan the ceo of uh, of uh, youtube these guys will be remembered as oh these they really try to shut it down they try they slowed down the progress um, but yeah, um, David Wood's uh, legacy must remain uh, because, as you know, like I've, I've, I've had problem with a lot of Christian apologists, but David Wood seems like the only person who is a Christian, but I haven't really seen any contempt from him towards Muslims. All the hatred that is received from um, uh, from Muslims is purely because they you know they're emotionally attached to muhammad and they can't uh they they, they, they can't tolerate any uh, any jibes or any criticism of muhammad's character that's the only reason but there's so many other ones like for example um uh, what's the name robert uh I keep reading, spencer that guy is clearly in my opinion a bigot and it's quite evident from every word that he utters but they are, david wood is not in that league david wood isn't He's and one 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 more thing that I wanted to point out about David Wood is he he he's got such a calm and uh, funny personality that you actually can't, you 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 actually forget that what he's been through and what he's actually going through life is not easy for him. He he mentioned in the same video that he I, which I didn't know about his his brother as well who had uh, some sort of. Uh, uh, 
mental uh, mental health issues. Uh, he lost the custody of his child, and he David Wood was trying to help him and try to get the um, get his nephew back. Um, it, David Wood has his own two kids who've um, uh, who are on life support. Um, um, this is not easy. I mean, imagine all of that that's happening in your life, and all of a sudden you're still doing something that you're passionate about, and you actually it's not just being passionate about. Let's just say you know, playing cards or bowling or whatever. You're, you're doing something that has a huge impact. He's been doing this since 2006 or seven. You know, that's the time when I actually became an atheist and he's been doing that since then. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, sorry, the world's changed and you're not allowed to talk about it anymore. So David Wood is not only uh, a gem of a person for, uh, for, for enlightening the Muslim world, but also personally, I think he's a uh, he, he's a wonderful person, and especially he he's been to jail as well. He's he, he's been, um, you know, like he's had that journey as well, and all of that. There's so much in his life that you can look into. So, um, and and, and you know, like he's given some really tough time to these Dava folks, like Dava, yeah. Dava and Muhammad Jab and all that. So, um, I, I I'm I'm a little bit sad. I'm a little bit sad that I I really hope. That he doesn't delete his videos, but he said that he would because he believes in burning the bridges, <laughs> burn the bridge down, and start fresh. Uh, I, and I see some logic behind that too. I know that I, I remember. Okay, he's probably not the best person to quote right now, but but I remember reading or uh, a quote from Will Smith when, when he said that never have a plan B because if you have a plan B, you don't put all um, your effort into your plan a because you always have this safe spot to fall back to um uh, so don't have a plan b and and that's that has always been my policy i never have a plan b i'm like yeah whatever i'm just doing it today if something if i hit a dead end i'll figure it out then so um so so that's what david wood is going with and he's going to put all his focus on his own website or platform where he's going to upload new co uh, new content but i think i i definitely think that um Yes, his loyal fan base would would watch his would consume his content, but there wouldn't be any new or, or he wouldn't reach out to Muslims for that matter. So, um, so yeah, oh, and uh, also I'm like you're saying, it is uh, it is really sad because it's like um, it feels like again it's very disappointing because you're like YouTube, you know what what side of history are you choosing to be on and which voices are you really silencing and you know look 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 at the long term ramifications of that if they're trying to do it now in a in a way that they think is, you know, that them doing something beneficial to protect Islamophobia or Muslims or whatever from this level of bigotry, it's going to come back and backfire because, yeah, you've got somebody like David Wood who started in the YouTube game. He says he started in the YouTube game before there were even activists out there. He was pretty much like yeah. a lone wolf doing it years mm -hmm. ago when he says it wasn't even cool to be on YouTube back then. Like now, you know, recently the phenomenon has got like everybody is starting their own channels and podcasting or whatever he was there when like there was nothing happening and for him to have to now depart from the initial platform that you know was so conducive to what his message was and the following that he got from it and if he's saying no this platform has become too toxic for me I'm done being silenced and I'm done wasting my time fighting back mm -hmm. um it is really really like it marks the end of an era and it's sad because it's like what happens now where where does the next wave of this movement go on the plus side, as you said, like he's just such a resilient character anyway. So his personal journey and story is, is like very, very commendable. Um, but yeah, it, I, I wonder if other people are now going to look at him. Like the thing is, because he's been hit by YouTube in this way, I am excited to see what he comes back with. You know, when you come back like bigger, better, stronger, I think I'm really excited for the, the next wave of content that he does put out because if it's anything like what we've seen on YouTube, you know, we're in for a treat. I, I really, really am a massive fan of, of his content. But yeah, I guess our job is right now to to hold the fort hearts really and just spread it um, as far as wide as we can, spread his content, make sure everyone's doing their bit to do that. And David Wood, I, I wanted to say something, David Wood, that um, he he said that he said that they eventually they're going to come after all of you, which is true, and and I understand that. Um, and we're, we're we're still holding on. We're still holding on um, that okay, as long as we can keep doing this, we're going to keep doing this. And as I said, 
when I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So, um, so I wish him best of luck. I understand what he's doing and why he's doing this. Um, I still, as I said, I still think that, okay, when it gets taken down, taken down, fair enough, but don't delete it because he, he's going to back up his videos. Um, but maybe they won't come after you once the video has been taken down. But again, fair enough. He's probably sick of it. He doesn't want to have to appeal. Uh, every time there's a, a silly strike, he just doesn't want to waste his time. Um, especially, as I said, we forget how much of our time is consumed by this activism. People, people think that oh, you know, you're just getting you, you're getting your daily dose of fame, and people are talking about you, and you 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 feel like yourself, you like you're at the center of the universe, and all that. It's not that easy as an activist, especially as a as an activist that is speaking against topics that can literally get us killed. It's not that easy. It can have, it's uh, it, can, it can take its toll on your mental health as well. Um, yeah, because so it impacts because your you... whole life. It impacts everything. It imp impacts the way people now interact with you. It impacts the way people see you. It impacts whether people are brave enough, quote unquote, to be around you and associated with you just by virtue of, of our beliefs now or what we talk about. It's, it's crazy the effects it has. And yet, as Horace was saying, that can get very draining as well. When like somebody like David would imagine how much you've got going on at home, but then you're engaging in these toxic conversations with some of these Dawa guys, or you know, you're fighting back against YouTube. It just seems like everything is against you. We we the people think that um let's just let's just say, let's just do a thought experiment. Ali Dawa I heard uh drives Uber, I think. Um but he's not doing something that the people that he's fighting against are not out there to kill him. The people we're fighting against are out there to, to kill us. Let's just say, for, for instance, if I wanted to be an Uber driver, then I couldn't do this. I, if, I, if I'm going to run into 100 or, or 50, I don't know how many passengers you go through in a normal Uber ride day, uh, Uber driving day, you don't know how many Abduls they're going to be. When I call Uber, and um, and sometimes when I see, you know, there's an Abdul there or, or, or someone. Not that I'm saying that they're all like that, but I'm just saying that I I am aware of that subconsciously. And and, and I can, I, I sometimes cancel uh, my Uber ride until I see another one. And I get charged for it. <laughs> so that's another reason why I don't Cancel before Uber seven driving. minutes then, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes you're going you know, to like, it, nope, it, yeah, but, fair enough. But, yeah, but Horace, this is so but my true. Point is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, go on. But my point is, our lives have actually changed yeah. forever. Unless we totally get away for the next five years into oblivion, and then we can just live <laughs> off the grid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, uh, so it does take its toll, and all we fall back to is your support. That's it. There, 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 there are no government agencies out there to protect us, and um, there, there, there are no checks rolling in. It's just individual people. We rely on your support. And I'm not just talking about financial support. I'm actually talking about all kinds of support, your words of encouragement, your, your liking, sharing, tweeting. Your, your, when, when, when we get attacked on Twitter or social media, then you go there and then you comment underneath and you show your support. That that really works for us. So um, so yeah. Well, good luck uh, to David Wood. And I yeah. I just wanted to emphasize. I think AP made a community post recently as well. Um, people people don't realize. And, and 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 again, we're all individuals. Some people react to pressure differently. I it's I think I'm lucky in that sense that I actually just out of sight, out of mind kind of a person. So if you actually do hear hear it one day that Harris got killed by someone because he was too complacent, that is. A likely opportunity oh, that 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 is a likely uh, possibility because I actually don't care. Like when I go out, I I'm not worried that someone's gonna come and stab me or something. But there is, and, and again, and that because in my heart, I genuinely believe that no one is out there to just thinking that oh, you know, I'm just gonna go through streets of London, I'm gonna hunt Harris down. I don't think that is the case. But it only takes one person. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't think about it. So, uh, so yeah, so we, we uh, and, and again, David Wood, again, he lives in America, different culture, but he has a lot on his plate. And 
and, and and appealing to YouTube because I think it seems like it's the last thing he wants to do. So yeah, yeah. The last one, let's move on. Yeah, no, I know I completely agree with what you're saying, and like it, it is true. Like I don't, I think we don't emphasize it enough. Like by showing our faces and saying what we say, the threat is is like ever present, and you know you have to think twice when you do something as basic and normal as ordering an Uber car ride, like I definitely think twice. And when I get in, I just hope that they're not of that, like they're not of that mindset or mentality and that they've never heard of me and don't know who I am. Because again, I also rationalize it, right? We exist in this tiny little bubble of, of YouTube, unless you're really out there looking for if Islam is true, maybe you've never come across me. You're a bit more, so I, that's why I always tell you to be extra careful and vigilant when you're out and about. Because yeah, the sad thing is, it really usually is not until after something has happened that the law has your back or steps in, so to speak. And that's just a risk we can't take in these situations because it just does take that one moment. And whether that's down to us being a bit complacent or lax, we're just trying to live like normal people. But just because of what we say, we have to have all these extra steps in our mind before we go about life. So yeah, that that is very intense. And, and as you were saying, I think AP did do a community post recently as well. And I really, really appreciate and respect that he he like owns the fact that, you know what, I just need to take some time out because you do get lost. This is very much like a, a black hole you can get sucked into. And I've got yeah. notifications for everyone streaming from our community. Like I'm always trying to pop in and out, but also you're trying to have a life outside of that and have a healthy detachment as well. So when I sit with my friends now or whatever, I'm really trying to be present in the moment. And, you know, it doesn't matter if someone's gone live right now, I can just just be there and be detached a bit. And, and it definitely, everybody has their ways of dealing with it. Um, but yeah, more power to David Wood, more power to AP, more power to you. And screw YouTube lately. Thing. I left God. social media after my first ban and set up a website. Having a website where people can download and share make share makes close your content harder. Uh, download and share. It makes your... Um, uh, the can't oh, shut God. down your content, I, basically. It's okay, yeah. harder. So CP... Christian Prince is doing something similar. I think David Wood can do it, but not rush it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, uh, I, I don't think he's rushing it. He's a smart guy, so he knows what he's doing. I think he he, he just wants to burn the bridge before he moves forward. I think that's his, that, that's the way he's going. And he's going to transfer everything. All That's a lot of content. <laughs> it's just 13, 14 years worth of content. But, yeah, so, I um, think um, you, you're right, um, because I think CP did – has been had this in mind from like the very get-go because the other day I was listening to one of his streams and he said like he's almost considering YouTube to imminently ban him so he was like I'm gonna drop this link here guys but you go to my Patreon and I'll tell you on that day where I'll be showing up live to stream so he's actually going on like a day-to-day -day basis on a on an ad hoc basis to just like be one step ahead of YouTube, if you will. And I think that that's, that is a clever position. So it's good you have a website as well. I think Horace, you've got a website as well, haven't you? Down here on the ticker, if you, I think, yeah, that's yes. it, HoraceSultan.com. Great timing. Um, if you like these videos and want to support me in my activism, then you can support me on Patreon or PayPal. Stay free, everyone.